Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another fragrance rotation video for the week ending the 23rd of October, 2022. Sensational. Now, this week, you will notice a definite shift because the weather's been fucking appalling. Uh, as it is suitably now. It is rotten out there today. I tell you, visibility isn't great. And it's pouring down. I quite like the rain. When I'm inside. Um, inside a car. Inside a building. Inside the house. When I'm out in the rain, I do not enjoy it. Um... I used to when I was a kid, but alas, I am not a kid anymore. Anyway, that pointless story aside, you will see this week that my choices have become distinctly darker, richer, and warmer. And to start that off, what a better way than to start with a vintage perfume, which is rare, discontinued, hard to find, and when you do find it, it's, ex it's expensive as all hell. And that is Egoist Cologne Concentré. This is Egoist, but more. Um, it is simply massive. It stuck around all day. I did spray a lot on the hook because it's the first time I've worn it. This was a, a, main, a, a mainly full, but at the end of the day, it is a partial. Um, used about, I'd say, about 10% of what was there. So I've got a 90 mil and then I've got a 50 mil as well. This stuff is absolutely beautiful. Um, Egoist is a rich, dense, woody, slightly sweet fragrance anyway. But this version, it's just more. You know, it's just more. It's, it smells like the colour of the juice. It's got that rich, golden, thick, sandalwood, warm, cinnamon, slightly slightly ever so slightly leather as well you know um i think it's still got that crazy that crazy wood it's not mahogany what is it it's like a it's like rosewood but it's not like a normal rosewood it's like a specific type of rosewood but um amazing that this didn't take off apparently egoist was a massive flop when it came out um, and then they released this in, like, Egoist came in 1989 or 90, because it was Bois Noir in the boutiques for a while. Um, and then they got rid of Bois Noir and re-released it as Egoist to the masses, and it flopped in 1990. So it was 87 for Bois Noir, 1990 for Egoist. This was 1992, and then they brought out Platinum Egoist in 1993. Um, to try and just like boost sales but I read in Gabe Oppenheim's book that they didn't do any market research for this for, for Egoist and that they spent 50 million dollars launching it and it completely flopped completely failed which looking back on it now is a massive surprise because this is a classic amongst us the type of people who watch these videos you know and it does smell good. I mean, it, it, it is. It's a brilliant fragrance. Maybe it was ahead of its time. You know? Um, but this is the Cologne Concentrate version, and it's just richer and denser, if you can imagine such a thing. Because I've got a vintage Egoist as well. I've got a couple. I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do a comparison because the person who sold me this also sent me this. And I don't know if you can read that, but it says Chanel Bois 
noir. And that is exactly what I am going to do. I am going to compare them. I haven't actually opened that and smelled it yet, so I am very much looking forward to doing that. There'll be a video coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've been sitting on that for a while. Anyway, I've talked about this fragrance enough. Brilliant. Is it worth the money? It's worth a lot more than a lot of, it, it's a lot better than a lot of fragrances in the same price point, even like aftermarket, you know? So if you like Ego Weast, this one's definitely worth trying out. It's so rich. It's so good. Anyhow, next. The next day I decided to wear something very different, an aromatic fougere, and this is Smolto Pour Homme. I love this stuff. You can tell by the size of the dent in the bottle. I have backups. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. Um, <clears throat> it'll be fine. I'll get by. But I have nearly finished this. But well, I say I've nearly finished this bottle. It's about two thirds. Between a third and half left, I would say. Two fifths. <laughs> two fifths. We'll go with that. About forty percent. Um, smoky Italian leather licorice at the top which doesn't stick around for too long but it just gives it that kind of slight weirdness slight spicy tang like knocks you off your knocks you off your not off your perch but you know what i mean it knocks you off your off your balance like you don't you don't see that sort of thing coming in like a fuji it's a brilliant fragrance i absolutely love it released around the same time as ego we actually i think it was 1989 or 1987 um 80s though 80s fragrance, beautiful. A, a, a gorgeous oak moss, leather, slightly aromatic dry down. It's absolutely stunning. And I highly recommend that you try and seek this out. There are different versions though. This is the version to get. There's a, the way to tell is on the lid, the newer ones have a banded lid. Like, so there's like bands going round here. You'll, you'll know when you see it, this one's flat. Um, the what the newer ones have like this kind of like ribbed lid or the gold bit on the oh it's so nice i love that stuff um <clears throat> next wednesday wednesday i went for a new fragrance something completely different but it stands up to the other two in in quality all of these fragrances are brilliant um and this fragrance stands up in quality. It is a modern, it is a modern fragrance, and it, I think it's going to become a modern classic. And this is Vini Havan by Lesson de Madable. This is beautiful. It's 2020, Antoine Lee, tobacco, chocolate. He, he, he's big on a chocolate note. Um, MXXX and MX also have this like cacao sort of note thing going on. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, the way that he's got, he's got this kind of ultrasound distillation thing and he can extract more of like the scent from it. And it's brilliant. It really is. It really is absolutely fantastic. Like I said, it's a modern classic. You, uh, you will spend more money on worse fragrances. So this is definitely worth looking into. Warm, ambery, vanilla. The vanilla's really good quality. It's very easy to do a bad vanilla. And this is a very good vanilla. I really like it. Um, nothing like tobacco vanille. So don't worry about that. You could own both. They are very different. They are very different and different enough to be able to own both. Perfect for the declining weather. <laughs> um, this will be getting worn over winter as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see a large dent put in this if I were you. Next. I wish they did 100 mil bottles though. Anyhow, next is another Antoine Lee creation and I will tell you the reason I wore this. This is Eugene's Les Abstraits La Dolores Guy. 
I want to try this in all the different weathers. So I'm going to be trying this in the winter. Not sure how it's going to go in the winter, but I want to try this in the winter. I want to try it in the autumn. And it was pissing down on Thursday, like it is now. Um, and I thought this would be a good day to try this because I want to see how it works and how it performs and how it goes in that kind of weather. Um, I do this with a lot of fragrances I've owned um, for a long time. You'll see them pop up. Like, over the years I've done this. Um, but it's usually for fragrances that I've owned for a long time. Um, but I wanted to try this with Eugene's because the rose is very wet. There's a wet rose in this, very lively. And I wanted to see how it worked. You know, with like the resins and the patchouli and everything. Um, and yes... It was it was it was interesting to see how a fragrance which I got in the summer and wore in the summer worked in the autumn and the winter, you know. So that is what I wore on Thursday, and thank God you can pick it up by the cap. The magnet is strong enough. Um, next on Friday, I went back to something more typical. Um, on Friday the weather wasn't quite so bad and I felt like I might have made a mistake but then I asked my friend I was like oh what do you think of this and she smelled it and she was like that is absolutely stunning and um, whether she knows it or not and I think she does she is actually a huge fan of the house of Serge Luton because <laughs> um, every time I wear something by Serge Luton she'll say that's really nice you know um and she's right. Because when you're right, you're right. And she's right. This is immense. It's a classic, and it's a classic for good reason. I have actually smelled the latest bottle of this. This one hasn't held up so badly. It's not as good. It's just not as good. It's not as defined. It's not as sharp. It's not as crisp. It's not as intricate. But it's held up better than some of the other stuff. Vetiver Oriental in the new bottles is a, it's criminal nothing like the older versions um Serge Luton is at a as a as a house is at the age because it's like 30 years old now where the perfumes have been reformulated so many times that they're starting to I don't know if you know what a feedback loop is but it's when you see I'll tell you the example of a feedback loop, right, is when you go on stream and somebody's already got the stream that they're on on their own phone, so it plays back and you get the echo. Um, or it's like when you see a television screen playing a film and the film is on the television screen, so you can see, like, rows and rows and rows of the TV screen, the same picture. If you look at the pictures, they lose a little bit of definition each time. Right, they lose something each time that happens. That's what happens with reformulations, right? They lose, they are part of a feedback loop. They lose part of their identity, part of the original picture each time they get reformulated. There are some exceptions <clears throat> and one of the exceptions is Fahrenheit. In the mid-2000s, Fahrenheit had a fucking midlife crisis and just decided to dump a fat pound of vanilla in there and it had no right to be there. What the hell it was doing there is nobody's business, right? But to be fair, Demaché came in and when he reformulated it, he made it much more like the original Fahrenheit than it used to be. Um, so that is, a, that is an example, right, where in-house perfumers come in where an in-house perfumer takes something and takes proper care of a fragrance, right? This is just another, another brick in the wall for my argument that reformulations are done by outside perfumers who don't really care and it's just a job and they give them to junior perfumers and it's seen as a bit of a... It's seen... It's seen as a bit of a, like a chore that you give to the young ones to do, you know? 
they're new, they're fresh, they'll, they're, they'll be excited to work on something like Fahrenheit Koros, you know. Sorry, that bottle has just taken a tumble, hasn't it? Get back there. But anyway, Shergi. I'm pretty sure Christopher Sheldrake didn't reformulate them. Put it like that. Saturday, yesterday, I decided to wear another classic. Another warming, beautiful fragrance. Absolutely stunning fragrance. One of the best of the century. I should do a best of the century. And this would definitely be in it. This is the amazing, original, Silver Stem Dior Homme. This was made by Olivia Polge. Me and Eugene were talking about it on stream. Olivia Polge got a hell of a resume for someone who I thought he hadn't been around for very long. He'd been around for ages. It's like 20 years. This is one of his, this is one of his like, this is one of his best perfumes still to this day. He's done stuff for Guerlain. He's done stuff for Dior. He's obviously done stuff for Chanel now. Far uh, Ferragamo. Valentino. This still is a... This changed perfume. This, this did what Bois d'Argent did, but for the masses. You know? Anik Minardo came up with Bois d'Argent in 2004. It was released. Um... Absolutely sensational perfume, Bois d'Argent, but this was priced at a point where the masses could get a hold of it, and it changed perfume. It was that metrosexual man who takes care of himself, the listening man, the man who... The man for all seasons, you know? That's what this, that's what this, this became. It became synonymous with Heidi Slimani's Dior Homme collection. Um, not just of perfume, but of the clothes. And it's brilliant. It really is fantastic. It's iris chocolate. It's a winning combination. You can't go wrong. As again, another chocolate fragrance in here. That's two. Has Shergi got chocolate? No, it hasn't. Don't be daft. But that is Iris as well. So I want a lot of Iris this week. Um, comfort and warm. Calming. Beautiful. Sensational fragrance. It really is fantastic. Well worth looking for silver bottles if you're into perfume. If you like the Dior Homme line, this one, and I do like this one. And I know the Fragrance Apprentice actually prefers this one, which is fair enough. Um, like, I'm not, not trying to denigrate this fragrance at all. It's brilliant. Even this reformulation from Demachy, very good. He really did. He, he, I mean, the 2020 version is an aberration. It's absolutely disgraceful. It's rubbish. Why didn't they just call it something completely different? 2020, Dior Homme 2020, I'm your man. Absolutely not woeful should have been called something completely different but in a different bottle it could have stood on its own as a fragrance instead they decided to put it in the Dior Homme bottle and just shit all over the line frankly um, one day I might do a comparison in fact I will I might do some comparisons over the coming weeks you know uh, something new for the channel anyhow Today's scent of the day. You know how I always like to reapply when I, just before I present it. This is a fragrance completely separate from all the other ones that I have uh, shown you so far in this, this long ass fucking fragrance rotation video. And this is Tom Ford's Noir Anthracite. This is a ballsy, ballsy release. Um, and truth to form, nobody bought it because people are bastards. 
This is brilliant. It is, it's warm because it's got that, it's got that pepper, spice, ginger thing going on. Uh, it's got birch, it's got leather. Um, it's got some jasmine in there as well, which, which like gives it this kind of fieriness along with the ginger. Um, ebony. It's also got amber wood in it. Would you believe? Now, I don't like it when they make amber wood the star of the show, but this is dosed properly and well. You know, this shows it can be done. I don't want to smell a perfume whose base is just one material. That's laziness. It's cheating. Stop it. <laughs> For God's sake. This is a very, very good perfume and very underappreciated. It's smoky. It smells exactly like the market and portrays it. It's got that anthracite, that, that, that uh, smokeless coal sort of vibe. Um, it's like the highest quality coal you can get if you're into coal, you know. Um, massively underappreciated. Glad I've got a few bottles of this. The price will go through the roof, but I don't don't see myself selling them. Um, it's again a ballsy release. This is when Tom Ford. This is one of the last Tom Fords to really do the Tom Ford thing and try and dictate to the market. This is, <clears throat> this is good and you will like it, you know. Um, alas, people didn't like this and people didn't buy it and it was, it was, it was given short shrift. It was given short shrift, which is a shame, but not by me. Um, I recommend you try and get a bottle of this or try and smell it. And as it is very, very favorable, it is a woody, fresh, but dark at the same time. It's very Tom Ford. And I am enjoying wearing it in the fucking pissing down rain today. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my fragrance rotation this week. I appreciate it greatly. I will see you all again soon. Bye.